Example 88. The design of caskets depends on average human heights. If men's heights are normally distributed and have an average of 69 inches with a standard deviation of 2.8 inches, find the casket length that will fit only the shortest 25% of men. All right, so when I read this problem, I hear this phrase normally distributed, and I think to draw a bell curve at that moment. So let's do that first. Let's just get that out of the way. So I'm going to draw my bell curve. And I'll label my z-axis and my x-axis like I normally do. The z is always centered at zero. The x-axis is always centered at the average, which is 69 inches here. And the standard deviation is going to be 2.8. All right, so now that we have that labeled and set up, our next task is to figure out what we're being asked to find in the problem. So very clearly, it says find the casket length. Notice that that's not a probability. A lot of times we're given bell curve problems, they ask us to find the probability that a certain thing is true. This doesn't say find the probability. So this lets me know that this is automatically a problem where we're using the table in reverse because it's asking us to find a value, right? Find the casket length, that is a value from the bottom here of the drawing. And they want us to find the length that corresponds to the shortest 25% of men. So again, what I'd like you to do in the beginning here is to draw two little bell curves, just two little mini bell curves. It takes very, you know, just a second to do this. And then what I want you to do is to try to think about which drawing makes most sense for your problem. Should there be a cut on the left or should there be a cut in the curve on the right? We're always going to have to make at least one slice in the curve and we're going to figure out based on these little drawings which one fits our problem most accurately. We're looking for the place where the shortest 25% of men are located. Well, in the middle of these curves is where the average man's height is. So think about it. Does this line represent where the shortest 25% would be? Or does this line represent where the shortest 25% would be? Well, to me, it seems like these people over here are taller than average, aren't they? Because if you're on this side of the curve, you're higher than the mean. If you're taller than average, you can't be shorter then what? You can't be in the shortest 25%, right? So that doesn't make sense. And this drawing is inaccurate then. The one on the right can't be the right answer because the area to the left of that line would have to be more than 50. So you're not in the shortest 25% if you're over here. You're above average in height if you're on this side. To be in the shortest 25% of men, it would mean that the 25% was down here in this tail, and the remaining 75% of the male population is above you. So I think this drawing makes the most sense. So I'm going to put my cut in the curve on the left-hand side. All right, good. So I found which location I'll draw my little slice in the curve. And then from there, I want to remember to label areas. I'm not shading a region. Don't shade anything here. We're not looking for an area. We actually know the area. We know that according to this line, this is where it separates the shortest 25%, right? So this is the 0.25, or in other words, 25% from the remaining what? In this part from here to here, think about it, if the whole half of the curve is 50 and 25% of it is here, isn't there another 25% here? And of course, there's another 50 on this side, which gives you the full 75 that's above this location. All right, but either way, the important part is this. Remember, we always need to know the number that corresponds to the line to the center. It's that area that we get from our table. And since we're going to be using a table to solve the problem, it becomes this area that's important. So I don't care that this is 25%. I care that this is 25%, right? Because that area from here to here is associated with the z-score that's located right underneath that. And that's what I'll look up on my chart. So let's go do that now, but before we leave to go do that, I want to remind you that it has to be negative here because we're to the left of zero. If you don't put that negative before you go to the chart, you have a very good chance of forgetting to put it when you're finished. And when you forget to put it and you plug your number into your formula, you're going to end up getting a number that's too large and you very often don't even realize it. And you report it as the answer on the test and your professor will mark it wrong. So just be very careful before you leave to put a negative there. Put the negative first before you even go to the table. That way you don't forget to put it later on. Okay, so let's look at 2500 on the table, or the closest number we can find to it, and then we'll find the corresponding z-score. Okay, so we're looking for the closest area to 0 0.2500. So again, we start in this first column, because that's the easiest way to locate it. We come down, we see that it must be between these two 
columns or rows. So we're going to go over in this first row, the 0.6 row, until we find something nearby 2500. And if I do that, I see that there's two numbers that are nearby. It's this value and this value. And it looks to me that this one's a little closer. That's about 14 ten thousandths away, and this is 17 ten thousandths away. This one's just a little bit closer. If we look at that's in the seventh position, so it's 0.67. 0.67. Okay, so we found the value 0 0.67, 0 0.67. That was the closest z-score to 25% on the table. Remember it's negative because it's on the left, and let's plug it into our formula to produce our height, our x value. So remember our x value will be equal to z sigma plus the mean. For us that's going to be negative 0.67 times 2.8 plus the mean of 69 inches. All right, so the fact that this is negative means we'll actually be subtracting these values. All right, so let's plug it in. We'll have minus 0 0.67 times 2.8 plus 69. Remember, if you're doing it in this way, you have to use a negative key on your calculator, the minus key. Don't use the subtract key there, right? Or you could just do 69 minus 0.67 times 2.8. That will work as well. Either way, your answer, remember, should be less than the mean because it's on the left-hand side. And as a quick check, we see that that is, in fact, correct. The answer is 67.124 inches. Or if you want to round off to just whole numbers, it'd be 64, 67 inches. Pardon me. That's about 5 foot 7. So let's write it as 67 point, let's just say 1, 2 inches. Okay, so that is our answer. So about five foot seven. So a man who stands at about five foot seven inches tall is the in the shortest twenty five percent of men. All right, and that's it.